Over the years, one of my biggest frustrations with owning camera gear is how easy it is to have too much of it on you at any given moment. I've definitely been guilty of overpacking my bags to the point where I slow myself down and actually get in my own way creatively because I tried to bring every combination of gear I could possibly think of for a day of photography. Today, I'm going to talk about the items that have made the cut to deserve a place in my everyday photography setup, and I hope this helps you make these decisions for yourself. Let's start with the core of the setup, the Wandered Rogue 6 liter sling bag. For daily outings, I've opted not to use a backpack just because if I give myself more space, I end up filling my bag with things that I don't actually need every day. The Rogue is the perfect compromise to this problem. It's a thoughtfully designed bag that takes advantage of all the useful surface area of the bag with loads of small zipper pockets and pouch areas to fit all kinds of accessories. The main compartment has padded dividers that can be folded down to compartmentalize items vertically. You can easily fit one mirrorless body with one to two lenses, depending on your setup in this main area. There were two main features that sold me on this bag. The water bottle and tripod holder, which folds down and can be put away when not in use, and the laptop compartment that folds down when you unzip the bottom of the bag. This pocket fits up to a 15 inch laptop with a sleeve on it. This is huge because it means I don't have to compromise on bringing a laptop to do any on the go editing or general work. Moving on, the camera I choose to use on most days of photography is my Leica M10. The M10 is seven years old now, I've owned mine for about three years, and it hasn't disappointed me. For those of you out there who have never tried a Leica or think they are overpriced, I completely understand your perspective. Before I owned this M10, I was with you. I never thought I'd be interested in a Leica and considered it far too expensive for a single stills camera, especially one that does not have autofocus. That was until I actually borrowed one and started using it. The Leica experience is definitely not for everyone and you may even be a person who could be worse off using one. There are plenty of cameras that would provide much stronger price to performance ratios. However, for me, I have never enjoyed using a camera system more than my M10 despite shooting with a lot of other cameras over the years. The small form factor of the system, simplicity in the buttons and exposure controls round out a very fun shooting experience and I absolutely love the lens selection on the M system. Speaking of which, my usual lens of choice these days is the Light Lens Lab 50mm f2 Speed Pencro. I made a full review video about this lens a while back, but here's a quick overview for anyone who has never heard of this lens. It's a replica of a classic cinema lens from the 1940s that still is popular today among commercial and Hollywood cinematographers. It has a very vintage look and it's particularly soft wide open even in the center, but the bokeh and rendering of faces on this lens looks great to my eye and it's a lens I really enjoy using. It gives images a very cinematic quality to them. It's also a lens that you can adapt to any modern mirrorless camera, so I often end up using it on my Fuji cameras as well. The final touch to my M10 setup that I wanna mention because I get this question a lot is my camera strap. I'm using the minimal anchor strap from Clever Supply Co. I absolutely love this strap because it has the quick release benefits of the hardware from Peak Design, but the straps themselves look way better in my opinion. Mine is in their limited edition color Ocean. The leather feels great and I also appreciate that Clever Supply Co. can do custom lengths so that you can get your strap made for your specific height and camera setup. To the right of the main compartment where my camera sits, I have my GoPro Hero 9 Black, which I use to shoot POV videos of photo walks. I chose the Hero 9 Black because image wise, it's good enough and I didn't really see a reason to buy a newer GoPro for my use of it. I also have the GoPro mounted to the Ulanzi GP16, which is just a simple magnet mount that I can wear on my neck and mount the GoPro to my chest in a much more minimal looking way than the typical GoPro chest mount. Along the back of the bag is where I store this slim travel pouch from Moment that holds a bunch of stuff. On the side with the green and red zippers, I store charged and dead batteries, which makes it easy to tell which is which throughout the shoot day. In the middle, I have a lens pen to clean lenses as needed. 
On the other side of the pouch, I have the Sabrinth 4TB Rocket Nano V2 SSD. This drive has been a good recent addition. It's super fast to work off of and write to, and it's the smallest SSD I've ever owned. It barely takes up any space, and I love that I don't have to offload it to my home storage that often because it's 4TB. I also use Sabrinth's 256GB SD cards in my cameras. This isn't sponsored, but I think Sabrinth is underrated because all of their camera media is both relatively affordable and performs great. I also have a Juice Systems Type-C dongle just in case I ever need to connect extra devices or I'm transferring media to a client on the go. When I'm sitting down to do some editing somewhere, I like using these non-slip silicone pads that stick onto the back of my laptop to keep my cables out of the way and give myself more space on my work surface. These things are like $5 on Amazon and I like that unlike Velcro, you can take them off so they aren't an eyesore on your laptop when you don't need them. On the topic of my laptop, I'm currently using a Dell XPS 15, which I picked up in late 2020. It's an Intel i7 1070H with 32 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1650 Ti. Despite the spec being slightly older, it still works great. This has been all I've needed for my photo editing work, along with any general internet browsing or writing for this channel. It's possible I'll upgrade to something in the near future so that I can do more on the go video editing, but I'm still really happy with the performance of this laptop for photography. This is the dbrand robot city skin that I recently put on my Dell XPS. Check out how detailed it is. Just as there are so many little scenes, there are also so many different style options of laptop skins that dbrand has so that you can find the skin that's perfect for you. There are so many different color and texture options for so many devices. One of my personal favorites has been their recent x-ray drop that is actually x-ray scans of all the tech devices they offer. If you care about protecting your expensive tech from incidental scratches, visit dbrand.com slash BYL. And while we admire this Pixel 8 Pro dbrand teardown skin, I'll mention that my daily driver smartphone recently has been the Pixel 8 Pro. Despite my preference overall for the iPhone 15 Pro's cameras, I still prefer the Android experience and the cameras on the Pixel are still excellent for photography when I happen to only want to bother snapping a photo from my phone. The 50 megapixel raw DNGs from the Pixel really impressed me this year and it's the first smartphone device where I'm willing to go to the effort of editing the photos in Lightroom regularly because it's actually worth doing. To go along with the Pixel, my headphones of choice are Sony's WF-1000 XM5s. These headphones are my absolute most essential piece of tech in my bag. I use these more than anything else I own. There is nothing I enjoy more when I'm walking around looking for a good shot than listening to a podcast or an audiobook. The active noise cancellation on the XM5s is the best I've ever used for a Bluetooth headphone like this. When walking around busy areas, I'm easily able to cut out distracting noise and it actually helps me focus on finding shots that are interesting. The earbuds themselves form a great seal on my ears and I'm never worried about them falling out even when I'm moving quickly. And I can wear these basically all day without any discomfort. I appreciate how small they are even in the case so that they don't take up much space in my bag. On top of everything, they sound great and the battery life is much improved from my previous pair of Sony XM3s. Clipped to my XM5s via a silicone case, I have a tile mate. I lose my headphones around the house all the time and this gives me peace of mind that if I ever left them behind somewhere, I at least have a chance of finding them. I also have a Tile Pro on my keys and a Tile Slim for my wallet, mostly because I was sick of losing all three of these items constantly. Lastly, in the top flap of my Rogue, I also sometimes store one of two filters a 5% Cine Bloom filter from Moment, or a Tiffin Glimmer Glass in Strength 1. Both of these filters can give a distinct character to images that bloom slightly, but in different ways. I find I use them mostly with sharper lenses than my Light Lens Lab 50mm, which does not need any additional character. You can do these kinds of effects in post, but I also find it's more fun to do them in camera when a shot calls for it. 
That is my entire everyday photography setup. I've gone through many iterations of this over the years, but I'm finally happy with this minimal-ish setup that at the end of the day just lets me enjoy having fun taking photos out in the world wherever I am. If anything in this video is of interest to you, I have put links to everything in the description. If you like this video, please consider subscribing.